Uh, hello everyone very good afternoon and i hope all of you are doing very well i welcome you all on behalf of qpi ai we are going to start part the session and uh, now you can ask your questions one by one i would request everyone to please raise your hand first and then uh, ask the question by unmuting yourself or you can even put your question in the chat as well whichever way you are comfortable with okay so uh, you can start asking the questions now anyone who would like to go first and i'll put those questions in the ch uh, chat those who have filled the google forms so i'll put those those questions in the chat Uh, and Nilanjana, you can take up the question in the chat. Um, hi, Ishita. I think you, uh, this question is from AI part. Maybe Arpit will be a better person to answer. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So Arpit will join in sometime, then he'll take the So, uh, Ishita... Meanwhile, uh, I'm requesting everyone, if you have hello. any questions, you can... Hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, Ishita. So, uh, this kind of uh, relation is not necessarily so to whoever who has asked this question, uh, I could open on to you. So let's say we have two linear transformations that are having, uh, happening subsequently. So this relation does not hold necessarily that will L1, L2 will be equal to L2, L3. So uh, is it safe to assume that it is like a matrix multiplication, A dot B need not be necessarily equal to B dot A? Exactly, that is the case. So when we uh, when we talk about vector spaces, this yes. linear transformations are represented by matrices. Okay. Yes. And so that is the basic thing, right? Yes, that is the basic. Yeah. So it is safe for you.
second question is by arun and he is asking in quantum teleportation how the quantum states have been generated between two particles uh did i mention that please do this uh, thank you yes sure So in quantum teleportation, uh, first an entangled pair is created between there. So one entangled pair is sent between uh, to those. Am I audible? Hello. Yeah, Nilanjana, no, we cannot hear you properly. Yeah, now it's better. All right, all right. Okay, so in quantum teleportation, uh, some information has to be transferred from one party to the other. Uh, suppose uh, an entangled pair is created between the respective parties, uh, then uh, the target state that has to be transferred. some bell measurement in their basis uh, and through a classical channel the particular state has to be transferred from uh, to the other party and uh, depending upon the outcome received by the other party uh, the second party will decide that which transfer which transformation some unitary transformation uh, they have to perform and after performing that uh, operation they would be able to get that particular state that has been sent to the party. So in this way, uh, one state can be transformed from one place to the other, or one party to the other, like that. Uh, if uh, the learner is present here, so uh, he or she can ask if uh, they have further questions regarding this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nilanjana, for answering the query. I would request everyone to please raise your hand or you can simply unmute yourself and start asking the questions to our mentors. I'm uh, rather new here. Um, you spoke about quantum entanglement, right? So what we have to understand here, is it that uh, measurement with one will obviously right. change the state of the measurement of the other. Right. 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 So how how do how do we set that uh, this measurement should lead to this state? Uh, right. You're absolutely right. So first, the entanglement will be created between those two uh, those two parties. So the parties will be correlated in the sense. So any uh, state that has that has been sent afterwards, so that will also be called related between those two parties so um, in suppose in first uh, place first party let us call it a so if uh, they perform the measurement so it will collapse to collapse to their state first so it will modify the state of the uh, particular uh, the state of the particular actually the state actually so uh, then that state will be transferred to the other party so if depending upon the uh, the state that they received so they will decide at that time that what uh, operation they have to uh, uh, like uh, act that that it will be actually result in uh, the state that uh, they are expecting to get 
at the end. So it's it cannot be declared beforehand. So depending upon the outcome, it will be decided. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Ayush and Nilanjana. Uh, next question, please. Uh, if you are not comfortable in asking the question, you can even write in the chat as well. No issues. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thanks a lot. Hello, yeah. Uh, please, uh, Rachid, go ahead. Uh, actually, I have not understood, uh, understood about the preparation and measurement of the pure state of the system. I'm just Sorry. starting with the code, uh, with the quantum. Uh, I, I haven't understood about the pure state in the preparation and measurement. So, and I don't know from where where to get more information about this uh, this topic. So can anyone explain me and just guide me from where I can get more topics or more data from where I can learn more? Because the books uh, because the books aren't available, so there are small topics which are being explained on the in this video. So, uh, Rachid, the idea is that the pure states are those states which have, you know, uh, a norm of one and they lie on the surface of the block sphere. Okay, that's a very intuitive way to understand the pure state. And the measurement, when we talk about measurement on a pure state, it applies a kind of projection onto the basis set. So, let's, let's take the simplest example that is possible. And let's take uh, 0 uh, and 1 uh, as our basis states. Okay. Get 0 and get 1. And any general state which will be represented by uh, alpha 0 plus beta 1, where alpha and beta are, you know, uh, represent the amplitudes and these are complex numbers such that the norm squared of alpha plus norm squared of beta is equal to 1. So since uh, this kind of normalization is holding into the system, this is a pure state. There are certain other states like, uh, you know, in uh, systems where we, this normalization does not hold and uh, uh, probably Nilanjana could explain that in more detail. But uh, as you progress through the course and as you visit, uh, as you look into uh, the parts around uh, qubit states, like single qubit states, you will find more information you do not necessarily need to refer to uh, books as of now. If you want to learn more, you can uh, always look into Nielsen and Chong as the first primary reference. So, uh, Nilanjana could help in explaining more uh, in uh, detailed terms. Sure. So, uh, regarding pure state and so the concept of mixed state will be required to differentiate between these two. So pure state means uh, in an ensemble of systems, only one state is present. So all members of the ensemble will have the same state. 
So this is the notion of a pure state. So in, uh, in the sense that no impurity is there. But for meek state, like in the ensemble, a fraction of uh, the ensemble will, will be in one state and the other fraction will be in some other state, so like that. And as Laksha was saying, so the norm will be preserved for a pure state. Uh, it will be preserved for mixed state as well, but the square of the density operator will be uh, uh, not same as uh, the actual density matrix in uh, mixed states. But for pure state, it will always be same. So, and uh, in the pure state, it will be uh, uh, placed over the surface of the block sphere, and for mixed state, it will be a point inside the sphere. So, so this is like a, a correlation between pure state and mixed state. And regarding measurement, uh, so measurement in measurement, actually, we try to uh, gain information about some observable of the system. And uh, during the act of measurement, the system collapses to uh, the eigenstates of the observable being measured. So, uh, if you uh, proceed with the course, so more assignments and problems will be uh, uh, provided, so you can get a better understanding if you solve more uh, problems on this topic. And if you uh, have any further doubts, you can um, ask anytime. Uh, also, actually, I understand these by these in the topic, but uh, um, mm -hmm. quiz which we attempt is it possible that we can get uh, if we are wrong about two times, so we can get the pure explanation about the question and the solution for the, the that okay regarding quiz. the uh, quiz questions are you are talking about. Yes, I, because actually see like a, there was an exa experimental setup. So where the mm -hmm. right box was measuring the particles in the orthonormal basis, and mm -hmm. it was represented by some um, some address, and uh, mm -hmm. there were options that we, uh, uh, which represent the projector. So I was not able to understand that. Really, I'm able to understand the topics yeah, which are the which are explained in the ref uh, in the videos and definitions so that was easy but the portion which are being uh, put up in the quiz uh, mm -hmm. according to me it sounds some kind of uh, tougher than that uh, which is explained mm, actually the difficulty levels of the questions are actually the topics that are being covered in the lectures uh, that are only being uh, asked in the quizzes also so if you uh, go through the lecture videos first, then it will be easier for you to uh, answer the questions because all the topics have been covered in the lectures. So maybe particularly, can you uh, name a few quizzes that you are uh, getting stuck? Or maybe you can discuss now. I think I got stuck in the third one. So, uh, um, okay, I will just read up the question. In uh, basics of quantum mechanics, and, in uh, that module, uh, basics of quantum mechanics, or oh yeah, okay. So yeah. which one? Uh, in the basics. Quantum state. No, which which sub portion? Uh, cool. Quantum state or projector? Quiz. Quiz two. I'm quiz sorry, three. I couldn't get it. Quiz three. Okay. Quiz three. Quiz three. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So 
Or should I read the question? So in this question, you just have to calculate the projector corresponding to the basis states that is given. So here the basis states is uh, A0 and A1. Those are the basis states. So what is the projector corresponding to the first basis that is A0? So this is just a matrix multiplication. Uh, no, no, I, I can see. It. So the question is regarding calculating the uh, uh, project corresponding to the base states given not yes. able to hear so your voice in this question you Sorry. just uh, am i audible now hello oh, yes yes the voice yes, is breaking actually yes. Okay, so in this question, you have to calculate the projector corresponding to the basis states given. So here, uh, the uh, projector of interest is uh, this A0, A0. So you just have to calculate, you just have to uh, calculate the matrix multiplication of these two states. So that is all it's required for this problem. Okay. So first you have to take the uh, conjugate transpose of this uh, kate A0 and then just multiply it with the one given. Madam, can you suggest any good reference book for these topics? You can start with Nelson Chuang or lecture notes by Preskill. Those are the basics, uh, uh, basic requirements for this course. Most okay. of the topics are being covered in the lecture videos as well. But yeah, actually, it's uh, very brief now. So we need a little bit more, uh, like a like a textbook mm -hmm. to go through. So. Mm -hmm. I understand. So you can take up uh, Nelson Chuang to begin with. So that okay, can you repeat? Can you, can you type in the chat? Okay, sure, sure. I'll just type it in the chat. So, um, thank you so much, Rachit and uh, uh, Nilanjana. I hope your uh, query is resolved. Right, Rachit? Yes, my query is resolved. Okay. okay. Uh, so, we can go ahead with the next question. Yes, please ask your question. So, my question is, uh, let's say uh, matrix is given. So, uh, how can I identify whether it's an observable or uh, like uh, evolution, like unitary evolution or, or an observable? So, it's... You know, one of the problem in the uh, assignment where we have to figure out whether a matrix given is evolution or an observable. Okay. So a matrix to be an observable, it has to be a Hermitian matrix. Okay. So to check whether a matrix is Hermitian, so you have to take the complex conjugate of that matrix. So. <laughs> as we call it dagger so if okay. a is the matrix so a dagger has to be equal to a so that is one condition to be a, a valid quantum operator and to be a, a unitary evolution so it has to satisfy the relation if the matrix is say uh, u then it has to be u u dagger must be equal to identity okay. so then only it will uh, denote a, a unitary transformation and for uh, so a matrix to be <laughs> evolution yes. and transformation are same right? right so evolution is nothing but a unitary transformation in terms of uh, schrodinger dynamics or unitary dynamics so in schrodinger equation the solution of uh, it is given by uh, the wave function or the state at a okay. time t it will be given by the projector or the time evolution operator times the initial state. So that time evolution operator is what we call this uh, evolution in this case. So it will be a unitary operator 
for uh, if we use Schrodinger equation and if we include noise in the system then it will be a dynamical map that will be covered in the later part of the uh, course so so yeah that's it and for uh, uh, a matrix to be a valid quantum state that means it has to be a valid density operator so the properties of density matrix uh, density operator has to be uh, investigated there so uh, it must be a hermitian operator as well here and the other properties uh, it has to be positive so you have to check for the eigenvalues of that uh, matrix so if all eigenvalues are uh, greater than or equal to zero then it will be a valid quantum state mm -hmm. and the other property is for uh, uh, an n state system so it has to be a square matrix of dimension in in uh, in in cross n so mm -hmm. and all, also the trace has to be one to preserve the uh, uh, the probabilities of getting all the states uh, uh, equal to one so the trace of the matrix has to be one. So these are the all properties that you have to look for. Thank you so much, Lakanjana. I have one more. Question. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so there are two things. One is Schrodinger's uh, evolution of state, and another is Heisenberg's mm -hmm. uh, evolution of observables. And both are, uh, both are derived from the same equation, right? Mm, derived from, from same equation? No, but actually, it was just stated yeah. in the... Um, I, I don't know. It is different. Sorry, I, I didn't get you. Your voice was great. In Schrodinger, actually, I call it right. So, in Schrodinger picture, actually, uh, people consider that the state is evolving. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it okay now? Yes. All right. So, in Schrodinger picture. Uh, we consider that the state of the quantum system is evolving. So we can use Schrodinger equation in that case. And uh, in he Heisenberg uh, picture, we consider that the operator is evolving with time, but the state remains conserved. Uh, so yeah, Heisenberg yeah. equation of motion, uh, we can uh, use Heisenberg equation of motion to uh, calculate the time evolution of the operators there. Okay. So while so this is the two different uh, uh, kind of evolution that uh, is being considered in uh, quantum mechanics. And the other picture is DDAC picture where uh, both state and observable evolve with time. So that is a hybrid picture of uh, the previous two. So it is like that. Okay, I'll study on this more. I'm sorry. Thanks, Pranjana. Uh, yeah. I hope Subhashish, your query is resolved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. So I'm taking one question from the chat that uh, Ravindra is asking one question. What do we mean when we say that uh, the state collapses? Is it analogy to say that it's now possible to say that the state of the particle or photon can now be measured with certainty? Does quantum state collapsing result in any photon being released analogs to how photons are generated in lasers? If now, how does one relate to quantum state?
maybe Nilanjana or Lakshya can take up this question. So, I think Nilanjana is out of the call due to some network issue. So, I will take this question. So, when we say that the state collapses to a certain outcome, that is uh, one of the uh, components of a BC state, what we need prior to measurement, the state was a linear combination of you know, the BCC states. And again, in the simplest case, let's take a single qubit with uh, zero and ket zero and ket one as the basis states. So prior to measurement, the state of our system was a linear superposition of uh, the two basis states. But after we apply this measurement, the state is reduced to uh, either one of the basis states. This is what collapse means. Then the second question is, uh, I mean, the, the idea here is that, are we certain about the uh, uh, outcome? So yes, after the measurement has happened, the quantum bit has uh, been reduced to a classical bit, which is deterministic, which is either zero or one. So we are certain after measurement that whether this state is a zero or one state. But Prior to that, we cannot uh, like we cannot a priori say whether the qubit will collapse in a zero state or a one state. Depends on the associated probabilities, and uh, uh, typically the circuit is run many times to get the statistical estimate of these probabilities. So I hope that clarifies. Well. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much, Laksha. Uh, so, uh, next question, please. Okay, we have one more question in the chat. I'm reading it out. Uh, this is uh, Rajaram is asking this question. This is general computation trend question. Branchless programming is something that is getting a lot of traction. Could you comment on its relevant in quantum relevance in quantum computing? So, the main idea with branchless programming is it's a technique for performance optimization. And it's a very good question uh, because I'll give an example. So, when we solve optimization problems with uh, you know, quantum inspired algorithms, there is a step uh, to calculate the cost of our objective function. And uh, cost calculation based on certain constraints which we check with a branching statement like if or else the statement or uh, you know, if we have some iterative procedure. See that if the cost computation is a bottleneck, so we would want to em eliminate this kind of uh, branching structure and uh, utilize some of the processor level technique to bypass this branching and uh, increase the speed of our execution. And this is typically possible when we are at a very low level of programming. Okay, let's say we are near to the processor and we are writing at the level of abstraction where we can utilize processor level or device level you know, on programming setup. When it comes to the relevance around quantum computing, so, so far we are not in the stage of uh, having uh, quantum processors where we can realize this kind of, because it's, it's more like a programming paradigm. And it typically assumes that our program structure is deterministic as a you know, uh, eliminating this kind of uh, uh, branching statement. We try to use more of uh, native parallelization that is uh, supported by the device. So the way it will be used in quantum computing is uh, whenever there is a, a hybrid quantum classical system, especially around integrating quantum devices with high performance computing systems. We will see that uh, this kind of uh, branchless computing will be used to increase the speed of execution and increase the speed of workloads that are running on classical devices. Since quantum programming model is entirely different and 
uh, we the notion of conditionals here is not same here conditional means that you know after we execute the circuit based on certain measurement output we can that can be process classified so that is also one possibility but to attain those kind of performance advantages with the quantum devices it, i think it's a long way to go but whenever quantum classical systems will be made in a hybrid fashion branch based programming will be used to uh, optimize the performance of classical code execution So, uh, I hope that answers. Thank you so much, Lakshay, for taking up the question, and I hope Rajaram, your query has been resolved. So, any other questions, please? Okay, one learner is asking about exam. Uh, so uh, I think Arpit, you can take up this question. You can guide a little bit about exam. Uh, all right, Arpit is not here. So but once he joined, then I'll ask him to take up this question. Yeah, Hemant, you can unmute yourself and please ask your question. Uh, I, I just, uh, I just wanted to know if uh, Lakshya sir had uh, received my email. Yes, hi, I have received your email and I am going to that. So I will try to understand. Oh, okay, okay, uh, all right then. Right now, I've not got a chance to look into it in the detail, but I'll I'll get back to you via email. Ah, thank you, sir. That, that's uh, yeah, thank you. All right, Hemant. Arpit, uh, one learner is asking about exam, so he need more information on exam. Can you please guide him about exam? Yeah, sure. So, uh, can you please repeat the query? Actually, I was I dropped the from the meeting for a while. Uh, okay, just uh, okay. It was from Google form, so he just mentioned about exam. Anand, An learner's name is Anand. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Anand, can you uh, elaborate the okay. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, Anand is not in the call. I just checked. The list. So in that case, we can ask uh, him to kindly write on the support mail and then definitely. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so any other query? Meanwhile, I'm requesting everyone to please uh, fill the feedback form in the chat. I'm just putting that in the chat. If you don't have any queries. Also, those who have filled the form, uh, just reply done in the chat once you have filled the form. And please uh, note it is very essential for us. So please fill this. And meanwhile, you can even ask your questions here as well. So if we have further questions after completing the course in between, so can we put up in the support, support mail and we can get answers again? Yeah, Rachit, definitely. Further question means you are related, uh, like you can even ask your questions in the forum as well in the panel, or you can always, if your query is related to quiz, so of course you can write your um, query in the support. And we can also set up a mentorship session if required. We can also write that to the support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. So we'll wait for another two minutes for more queries. And if we'll not receive any query, then um, then we'll end up the session. I'm requesting everyone to please fill the feedback form. Also, please respond done here if you have filled the form. Thank you so much, Harish. Thanks, Madhun. Uh, so I don't think we have any more queries. Uh, okay, so we can end the session now. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Hope this discussion has been informative and useful for all of you. And still, if you have any further questions related to quiz or any other thing, please feel free to reach out uh, to us at support at the rate cube by AI .tech. Uh, This email ID is mentioned in the chat. You can even copy uh, from there or you can write a mail if you have still any further questions. All right, so thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so yeah, we can drop off and um, we can end the session now. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.